Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have James Evans. James, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm happy to have you here. This is going to be a fun episode. Uh, for folks who are not familiar with you or your work, do you want to start us off with a bit of a background? Yeah, for sure. Um, so let's see where to start. Um, I'll talk about myself for like 30 seconds, and then I'll talk about Command Bar, which is much more interesting. <laughs> uh, I uh, studied computer science in uh, college, which uh, had the primary benefit of helping me meet my two co-founders who I uh, started Command Bar with, Richard and Renee. Um, uh, never actually worked a day in my life as a software engineer, which is how I will disclaim any technical problems we encounter uh, today. <laughs> uh, I actually started, uh, my first job was in uh, investing, um, okay. which was uh, which is fun in a lot of ways, but it quickly led me to realize that I wanted to you know, build stuff as a career. So I left and got the world of investing, joined a startup. Um, I made the rare web three to web two transition, mm. <laughs> probably like the end of one. Uh, I, I joined a crypto startup. And then when that in 2018, uh, when that went bunk, uh, Richard Vinay and I started working on our own projects. And Command Bar is the latest of those, uh, definitely the greatest of those as well. <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, Command Bar. So, Command Bar is the name of your company, but Command Bar is also something that I've just started to see show up in the wild a little bit. It's um, it's become increasingly popular in apps like slack and discord and you know all over the web to start see this this command k shortcut and that opens up a bar and then i just type something into it and i'm able to navigate or move around and and so i guess what like i was command did command bar start that did you see it starting and you were like oh there's a business no no here? We, definitely, like, how did we definitely did not we we um we see ourselves as evangelists of the pattern, definitely not the, not the creators of the pattern. Um, we, the, the brief origin story of Command Bar, Rich and Vinny and I were working on a, uh, a different product, um, is an ed tech product. If anyone, if anyone in the audience teaches computer science, it's called CodePost, and it's a free tool for leaving, for helping CS instructors give feedback to students. So we were working okay. on that. For the sake of this discussion, you can think of it as like a generic, you know, crud software product <laughs> uh, and we were working on that and our superpower as as founders was that we were really responsive to user feedback which meant that any feature that a user wanted we would put into the product and, and people really like that the problem is if you do that repeatedly you end up with a product that's kind of hard to use no one's using all the features it's when you first get in as a new user it was hard to understand how to like set up your account and, and get value in the way you wanted um, and so we were, we were trying to fix this problem and we all used apps like yes code, superhuman that had this pattern. Mm. And so we realized like this could help mitigate, even solve our UX problems because instead of someone landing in code post, having to figure out all the vocab words we were using to describe our business logic, what page to go to, to do action X, they could just search, like just state your intent and then it would be the job of the search bar to sort of serve up the next steps that would correspond to that intent um and so we built it we started building it for that product and the more we got into it we were like this is like the most amazing pattern ever like why doesn't every piece of software have this like why is it limited to these these few like relatively domain specific products um and well, long story short, we decided that it should be everywhere. And like, that's why we started Command Bar was to bring that pattern to like all of software. Gotcha. We're, we're having a, a little bit of, of connectivity issues here. It sounds like you might be buffering a bit, um, but we caught 95% of that. Uh, and for folks who are, are watching live, if, if you want to follow along in the uh, live captions, That'll also help in case anything gets garbled in uh, in the way. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I kind of agree. I, I uh, the the command palette, this idea of like a, a universal command K shortcut, is really exciting to me because I've found that as I've navigated around different apps, 
this universal ability to just hit command K and then make stuff work. It, it creates uh, a uniformity across my entire experience. And, you know, you, you mentioned stuff like, okay, so superhuman, that's what I use for my email Slack and discord or what I use for chat in all of those. If I'm doing something and I, I just hit command K and it works. And, uh, and actually a great example, if, if people want to try command bar in action, we just implemented this in, in Netlify a little while ago. So if you go to your Netlify dashboard and hit command K, you have the same experience that you would have in Slack or Discord or Superhuman or any of these other apps that has a, a command palette where command bar will open up and you can say things like, well, actually, this is the part that's cool about command bar because what I've always used it for is like navigation. So I would open it up and say, take me to my sites. But it does more than that, right? So, so what else can you do when you're when you're using Command Bar? I think the like geeky way to describe it would be it lets you query content just like a regular search bar, okay. but also query over business logic, and that okay. can mean jumping to any page in a product, random access instead of like having to understand the hierarchy of how pages are constructed. Like maybe you're looking for a specific setting. This is a use case right. we see a lot. Oftentimes a user will be looking for a specific setting. And actually this is, this is a use case in Netlify. Mm -hmm. But you, may, you might know where the settings page is, but there might be like eight pages of settings and you might not know like, okay, what, what's the actual sub page that contains the setting that I'm interested in? Funnily enough, right. I think one of the most used command bars in the world is actually in uh, Mac OS preferences. If you ever use the search oh, yeah. bar on the top right, like no one is actually figuring out What's the, the hierarchy is so like inscrutable. I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> I've been using Max for like 15 years. Um, so the, the random access of pages is a big one. But you can also, and that's a pretty simple use case, and we'll set up the navigation use case later. It's really quick. Um, but you can take it further and you can actually let users take actual like, you know, create or update actions in a command bar as well. And so we'll walk through a use case there where, you know, you'll be on a detail page and you might want to edit some of the underlying content. Same problem. You might not know what's the button or what's the menu that contains the action that I want to perform on the, the record. Right. Or you might actually know it. And this is the other value problem of command bar. Red bucket, the first set is kind of discovery. I'm trying to do something inside a product. I'm not totally sure how. That might be because I'm a new user. It might be because I just don't use the product that often. But the second category is I do use the product a lot. I know exactly how to do the thing I want to do but that thing is slow. Uh, mm. And that's the other benefit of command bars. It's often just a lot faster to, to use with or without a shortcut. And we'll get into the distinction later than the underlying UI. Okay. Yeah. And, and so um, the, the first thing that comes to mind when I imagine implementing one of these is whew, that sounds like a lot of work. Right. And, and so my, my initial gut reaction to let's implement a command palette is, does that mean I have to re-implement all this logic across my whole <laughs> app? Like, so I built all these settings pages and all these settings pages are complicated forms and, you know, these, these inputs and, and I'm, I'm doing this stuff. Do I have to re-implement all of that? Like here are my forms and here are the different inputs that we need. Is that all getting re-implemented or, or uh, you know, how does that work when you, when you start plugging into command bar? Yeah, I think the the easiest way to understand this is you know we'll get into this and we'll see the way we set up the the demo app that we're going to walk through. What we tried to simulate was an existing app with existing mm -hmm. data sources. How do you go from that to an app that also includes a great command palette? Um, right. And so it's it's really about the way I think about it is I I really like uh, analogizing command bar to Neuralink. Uh, Maybe that's my ego speaking, but the way you can think about it is you basically have to wire up command bar to data sources and actions. And then we take care of the presentation of the, the actual user experience part. Where we oh, present, interesting. You know, okay. The actual okay. search bar, the thing that lets you search for content and take actions. I got you. I got you. That makes sense. Um, so let's see, what else should I ask? All right. So what, what have you seen as people are building out their command bar experiences you're you're you know you've offered this basically as software as a service so anybody who wants to can go to command bar sign up for this and implement a command palette on their site 
what would you say are the the biggest things people are seeing in terms of benefits and, and also surprises as they as they implement this feature on their sites? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the surprise, most surprising thing that um, people realize once they set up a command bar, and frankly, this was somewhat surprising to us as well. Um, I think a lot of people think of a command palette as a power user experience. That it's mm. like a, it's kind of and it's kind of in the name. I think in some ways we do ourselves a disservice by calling ourselves command bar um, because it sounds like a port it, and it is a portmanteau between you know a search bar and a command line. Um, that's mm. like very explicitly what it is. Um, but then people think command command line that must only be relevant for people who would use a command line. So a technical audience mm. or power users, people who are using you know, a product a lot, um, kind of that speed use case we were talking about. What we find over and over again is that it's, yes, like it is really useful for those people. Um, but the discovery aspect is like creates, you know, as much, if not more value for the people who set up command bar because what they find is the new users increasingly have that muscle memory to open it and like type what they're trying to do because they don't understand the underlying uh, app. And so when we're, you know, working that, through a lot of times we asked, go ahead, go ahead. well, I, I was just going to say like, that actually makes me wonder, do I get, do we get analytics as command bar users that say like, this is what people search for that return no results you, so that we can totally see can. what yeah. people are trying to do? Yeah, that specific search, that um, oh. the, a specific search that we our customers have found really useful, we call it dead end. So it's yeah. a search that didn't end in a successful command execution. So Unmet, that's like passive dead. user research too. Totally, yeah. And so you can just, one of the things we encourage everyone to do is once you've been live for like two weeks, filter all your dead ends for your new users and then you've got like a great list for what people want to do inside your product but aren't able to do that is i had not even considered that and that's a brilliant way to look at this because it just it, it just makes sense like if you teach people that if you want to do something in your app you should open the command bar and type in the thing you want to do you basically you have a built-in wish list like you've either solved their problem or you didn't. If you solved their problem, great. You're doing exactly what you set out to do. If you didn't solve their problem, now you've got a like a checklist of like users say they want X, Y, and Z. Um, I mean, I love that because obviously we all should be, should be chat doing uh, targeted user research. We should all be focused on asking our users about what, what are they using our, like what pain are they solving by using our product? What, what things do they find frustrating? What are the, the parts of their workflow or experience or development process are, are they struggling with? And that helps us build a list that's actually built on user needs and not just on like our gut feeling of what would be cool or, or practical. Um, but what I love about this is that it, it gives us that like, okay, I'm not asking users directly. They're telling me directly what they wanted to do. And that's a really great way to validate that the products that we're working on inside of our company are things that people actually want. Like if we've got, right. hey, 10% of users write this query and it dead ends, that's a pretty good indication that that would be a valuable thing to build. And it's totally not a substitute for that more targeted user research that you're talking right. about. I think the way we see it uh, used is in two ways. One, to help you tee up questions that you may not have asked like we had one mm -hmm. um one customer pretty early on in command bar who set it up and then saw like tons of people searching for the word slack and they were like what why are people this isn't the thing in our product like why are people searching for this and then they like they you know contacted a few of the users and did that target user research and they realized that people wanted a slack integration <laughs> that, like oh. wasn't on their roadmap um, but they just just it was so striking in the data just to see like that word and different variations of it <laughs> and this, the spellings um and the other thing is then is to just build N. So like 
if you if you think a lot of people are interested in the feature, you can just go into the dead end data and see like, okay, well, how many people are actually searching for it without me prompting them? Because, you know, of course the, you know, you don't, you don't want to get into these research sessions and say, would you use X? Because of course yeah. it's a really hard question to ask a user. Well, it's, but if they're searching like the, for it, you're pretty sure that at one point in time did want it. Yeah. That's like the, the number one, uh, the, the number one, like major problem that researchers run into or, or people trying to validate products to go, would you pay for a product that did this? And everybody says yes, and <laughs> nobody opens their wallet, right? So, sure, yeah. Um, I'll spend so that, that fake feature money. Yeah, right. And and that's the thing is like, you're not looking for whether or not somebody thinks they would be willing to pay for it. You're looking for whether or not somebody feels pain by not having it. Because like, I open my wallet because I need something to be true. Not because like, like every once in a while, I'll go out and indulge on something that just makes me happy for no reason. But most of the things I buy are because I've got some usually very minor pain, like, oh, I wish my laundry detergent smelled better. Well, I go buy a better smelling laundry detergent. I've opened my wallet to solve that pain. Or it's something more major, like, hey, my desk broke. I need a place to work. I'm going to go open my wallet to, to do that. And it's the same online. I, I pay for Superhuman because I wanted a command palette and that very right. quick navigation in, in doing email. Um, I had to turn off their their creepy tracking but i you know otherwise i love that feature or that that product um and you know think like just things like off. that did right? you command did you command k preview tracking i did I, yeah like command k like disable tracking or whatever the tracking yeah. pixel whatever it is they do i was like yeah get that out of here and then and now i love the feet you know i love that thing um and and i i think the the thing that's interesting is that what what this does like you said is it gives me a list of pain people are feeling like if everybody's searching slack it's because they have a pain. I don't want to have to log into this app and, and look at the notifications. I want the app to tell me when I need to pay attention. Great, Slack notification. But that's bigger than Slack, right? What else do you use? Do you use email? Do you use Discord? Do you use, you want like a Twitter hose for your, your status page? Like all these things start to, add, it opens up questions. You can go talk to users. How are you using this information? What happens when it gets into right. Slack? Like a whole new avenue for what something might be willing to pay for. I forget someone, I forget who it was, but someone a while ago, it was a while ago, tweeted something like, why doesn't every app have a feedback box that takes up like, you know, the whole quarter of, of the UI, at least for new users, and just encourages new users to like dump their thoughts as mm. they're using the product, what they're finding, what they're struggling with. Um and I thought that was really insightful, but my my uh, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, as a product person, I would love that data, but it also sounds like a lot of work on behalf mm. of the user to to like even if you're just stream of conscious, it's 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 laborious to like take your thoughts. Doing a user interview like requires work on behalf of the user. Uh, right. People sometimes forget that to serialize your thoughts in a way that like makes sense to the, the product person. And command bar is kind of like V two of that concept but it, it importantly like it gives the user a, a reason to to do that because it's it's really useful it's, it makes it easier to use the underlying application and the right. user research is kind of a byproduct of the fact that it's like useful for users and i wanted to piggyback on something you said earlier um which we think about like all the time it's just that muscle memory of doing command k some people don't do command K, by the way. Command P is also, you know, it's, it's oh awkward. right, right. Um, we thought about calling our company Command K, but we we didn't want to, you know, pigeonhole ourselves to, to one shortcut. Um, but yeah, we, we talked about was doing the power it across... bar was taken, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you talk. We, we we originally actually uh, for the for programmers in the audience, uh, the name of our company is Fubar Inc., mm. um, which we thought as the first name of our company, we thought it was hilarious. A lot of people had no idea what we were talking. F O O B A R. <laughs> That's also got to be like the hardest thing in the world to Google. It w well, we, yeah, we thought we were being really clever and like we were going to, you know, get all this free SEO juice because people would be linking to foobar.com. Turns out foobar.com was like extremely expensive for that reason. <laughs> uh, someone figured that out before us. But anyway, this idea of like muscle memory across the internet is so important to our company. There's this amazing mm -hmm. blog post written in the year, I think it's 2000. Um, called the end of web design. Do you know this one? I don't know this one. I need to go find it. Amazing this read. Um, basically, the premise is web design is over. The building blocks we have today are the building blocks we should have going forward. 
Why? Because people spend way more time on not your site than on your site. And so it behooves you as a designer to use the patterns that other people use because those are going to be familiar to users. You shouldn't be inventing your own building blocks because that's going to require a ton of work. Um, you know, that's such a good point because if you think about what we do when we are in, uh, when we're in situations like working at a team that has four distinct units and dozens of teams working inside those units. Like I did this when I was at IBM. Everything we talked about was creating predictability and cohesion and this feeling of using the same app and making sure that everything was predictable and uniform. And that was all, you know, we were like, let's build a design system. Let's build our design right. language. And, and, you know, people get grumpy about stuff like bootstrap or material design because it's like, well, the internet just looks the same. It's like, yeah, but also if you go That's use That's really bootstrap, useful. That's a really useful exactly, coordination concept. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. It feels exactly the same to use every site built in material UI. Now, I weep a little bit for the the like hit to creativity that comes with with that. Oh, like totally. I, I I used to love the weird web, and I still do love the weird web. If you go to my website, Jason.af, it's it's weird. The UI is not great, like or the UX is not great. It's a little messy, right? But that's sort of intentional. I wanted it to be playful and weird. I'm also not trying to sell anything on that site though. Like if I was trying to get you to go there and perform actions other than just explore and play, I think I would have built that site differently. Um, you're the you're the bar you're the you know nook and cranny bar that you know has regulars and people really like it for its aesthetic not the like department store that's optimized for you know selling stuff yeah right and you go to those places for different experiences like when i go to a like if, when i need to go buy pants i don't want to have to like know a secret password to get through the front door and then have to like dodge a bunch of people in american gladiators gear in order to get to the dressing room i just want to go in and get some pants and be done right um, but when I go to that bar, like I totally want to have a password and I want right. like when you walk in the door, somebody throws a water balloon at your head and if you get hit, you get bounced, right? Like, I love that. That's, it's such a ridiculous thing and it's fun and you tell a story about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's just, it's, it's an adventure. Um, right. Benjamin, you're well, asking, what we're trying to do is not... site. The, the site is not broken. However, uh, the, the root domain is. So if you hit www.learnwithjason, it's fine, but I don't know why I broke learnwithjason.dev. I, I will fix it today. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, anyways, I just interrupted you, James. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, I think that's one of the things I really like about Command Bar is that in most of its forms, it's a floating modal. So it doesn't like have to interrupt the, and it's very stylable, as we'll see. It doesn't have to interrupt the aesthetic of mm. the site. It can just sort of be a helpful guide that you summon when you need it, but otherwise sort of gets out of the way. You know, you know what it reminds me of? And, and this is going to be a niche reference. So uh, for folks who watch a lot of TV, get ready. You're going to enjoy this. It reminds me of On the Good Place, Janet. Like wherever you are in The Good Place, you say Janet and she pops up. And you ask for something, she gives it to you, and then she disappears, and you just go back about your business, right? And command bar is the same thing. No matter where I am in the app, I hit the shortcut, it pops up, I ask for what I need, and it either takes me to the place I need to go, or it does the thing I need to do, and then lets me back into whatever, wherever I was. It's kind of a, it's not a pattern interrupt. It's like a pause. Pause to accomplish something, and then go back to what you were doing. Kind of sounds like Clippy. Uh, some of our customers yeah, actually yeah. refer to us as Clippy, but not annoying. Clippy, but not annoying. I mean, I think that's a good, you should do that as an April Fool's joke. Just <laughs> should be, should be our unofficial mascot. <laughs> and yeah, but just going back, going back to the, uh, to the end of web design thing, like you can kind of view like our job, like the only thing we do as a company is we're trying to make a new building block happen on the internet. Uh, mm. And so hearing you say like, I use command K across multiple sites super exciting because the more people like the more people have that same experience it's, we can create way more value because people are coming to a site new user don't know how something works we want them to be able to expect this experience where they can just pop open the search bar and state their intent like we firmly believe that should be a universal expectation in software and so we're trying to get over this hump of we want the building block to be so common 
that it actually becomes a requirement because it's hard to start a new building block. But once you get critical, you know, once you get past that critical point, it becomes a user expectation. And we're starting to see, like, I think in the case of Netlify, I think there were a lot of Netlify users who were like, we, we want this. Like, we, we, we see this in other apps we use. And we, we want this experience in Netlify as well. And that's like, that's the coolest thing in the world. When someone comes to us and says, my users want this, it's like, oh, it makes, makes my day every time. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like that's, and, and one of the things that I love about tools like this, like, you know, I made, I made the decision to work at Netlify because of the same thing. When people use Netlify, they compare it to what they were doing before and they go, I don't want to do it without these tools. Like these tools make my life easier. It's like two day shipping. It's like, you know, you needed two day shipping, but like, it's really hard to go back. (laughs) Right. Right. And I feel like, like command bars have kind of been that for me as well. Once I, once I get used to the fact that, that an app has it, I I don't really use nav after that. Cause I mean, this is a standard problem for like every app. As it grows, where do you put things in the navigation? Like, okay, I want a theme toggle. Well, we don't have enough room to put the theme toggle up in the header. So let's move it under user settings, appearance settings, something else. Does it go to the footer? Like, where do I go to find that theme toggle? Well, in Netlify, it used to be hard to find. Now you command K, write theme, and it says toggle theme. I hit enter and I've toggled my theme. And now I don't have to think about it anymore, right? So, um, and like, for example, we just shipped a new color theme in, in the Netlify app, uh, that I love, by the way, we'll look at it probably, we might look at it later today, but, um, you can go try it right now. You can just command K toggle theme, command K toggle theme. Like it's, it's so nice to be able to do that rather than having to figure out like, Oh yeah, go to just expect. Yeah. Just expect, like, I don't, I don't really know, but I can just, okay. I'll just command K search for it. And the other thing we haven't talked about is. The fact that, um, and we'll see how this works once we get into building it, but, uh, and I think we're, we're early in this and enabling this as a company, but we, we believe that you shouldn't have to use the words of the underlying product to get something done in a product. Oh, so like the, the Netlify command is toggle theme. Uh, and now people are going to go try and like search for synonyms in Netlify and find that it doesn't work. We're, we're working on it. <laughs> uh, but we think, you know, you should be able to do toggle theme, dark mode, light mode, change color, mm. like any any way of expressing the action. You shouldn't have to learn the Netlify words to toggle theme in Netlify. Gotcha. And that's the gotcha. other half of command bar. And that's why like people love analogizing it to, to a command line. And I think that it, because that it does have some merit. I, I actually prefer voice assistant as an analogy because it gets to that mm. idea that like you just have to especially with you know some of the m- more freeform ones like google assistant you just tell it what you're trying to do and if it's if, it, and if it's any good it'll just do it or it'll show you some options that's that's yeah. the end state we're driving towards is you just hit app state intent you use the ui for stuff that deserves the ui graphical stuff when the app needs to build a hierarchy in the user's mind, they can use the UI. And we're not trying to replace GUIs. Sure. We just think so much of action taking could be easier if you could just tell software what you wanted it to do. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I, I feel like the questions I'm asking now are going to start being about like exactly how we do this. So it's probably going to make more sense if we switch over into pair programming view. So let me jump us over. We're going to go to pair programming mode. Camera two. And now I'm going to do a quick shout out to our captioning. So we have Amanda with us today from White Coat Captioning, taking down all these words. Thank you so much, Amanda. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, just go go find that on the old homepage. Um, we're talking to James today. So that's Dazzaloid on Twitter. Head over there. Give him a follow. And we're talking about command bar specifically. Uh, And if you want to see this in action, let's just do a quick demo. This is the the Netlify site. So if you want to see, like, I type theme. And now I'm in the theme. And this is the the facelift that I'm so happy about. We we just got a whole bunch of teams together and worked on uh, making the, the Netlify app look like the Netlify homepage, which... Prior to this, it definitely didn't. And now they actually kind of feel like they're part of the same app universe. So I'm really, really thrilled about this. But I can just Command K, theme. Oh, back to dark mode. Beautiful. Look at that go. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go check that out, you can go check it out at app.netlify.com. 
Um, you can try out a command bar that is actually implemented. Um, I shared a link to this end of web design article. We talked a little bit about the good place. And now I think we're ready to, we're ready to go do some, uh, some command bar. Let's do some command bar. All right, let's roll. What, uh, oh, we got a little bit of echo. Check, check. Okay, we're fine. Um, all right, so what's my first step if I want to get involved here? So if you were not Jason and you wanted to get started with command bar, you can just click the try it. I think the try it now button. Try it now. Um, and I, I mentioned this in the button. chat. If you, if you want to make that window bigger, there's a menu and you can copy the embed link into a new tab. That'll make it full screen so that you're not uh, looking at, at a tiny little window. Um, and so I'm going to okay. sign up for an account with my Google. There we go. I have done it. Um, I'm just going to just put in some, some stuff. One to 10. And why do I need command bar? Voila, okay, you're in. I'm in. So this is the this is the sort of normal onboarding flow that we take you through. A lot of people who are signing up for a command bar, you know, aren't super familiar with command palette. So this just sort of tries to explain what a command palette is, why it can be valuable in an app, and, and gets you started. Now we've actually uh, created a account for you, Jason. That's preloaded with some goodies. So I, I actually oh, can invite you to that account now. Yeah, yeah, please do. Okay, and then while I'm doing that, if you want to actually pull up that repo that I shared. Yeah, right here. Here's the repo. I'll drop this in Perfect. the chat as well. So yeah, for anyone who's following along, um, this app is a little demo app. Well, let me back up and say, if you ever want to like understand how Command Bar works, the best way is to go to a site that uses it. So Netlify is one, ClickUp is another one, very different type of app, but we'll give you a sense for what Command Bar, Command Bar does. If you want to explain a command palette to someone, I am faced with this challenge quite often, as you, as you might expect. Uh, we built a site called demo.commandbar.com um, that is a little sample app that explains, has some you know, walkthroughs and explains what command bar is. If you're an Office fan, you will, you will enjoy some of the content that we had way too much fun putting together. Uh, <laughs> what we're going to do now is walk through a... Uh, we have essentially simplified this app into this repo that Jason was just sharing. And we're going to walk through adding a command bar to that simplified version of the demo.commandbar.com app. And the, the cool thing about command bar is that you have to, you can't install it in you know, without an underlying app. So you have to actually put it in the context of, of some piece of software. And so that's what this repo is. Okay, so we're going to go into here. I'm going to GitHub repo clone. And let's see, I'm also going to move to command bar. All right, so um, in here, I open this up. We've got a public folder. Looks like some pretty straightforward stuff in here and a source folder. And this is a React app. I think I saw on the README, this is built on Create React app. Yes. Correct. Just very, very simple. Cool, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's run this thing. So I'm going to, is it, it's yarn, so yarn. And this will take a second. Almost, there it is. Oh, just kidding. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And then I can yarn start. And it's an app. Hey. Okay, cool. So uh, basically the idea is this is a simple CRM um, for the purists out there, very similar to a to-do list app. There's some records. That record, those records have some information on them. You can edit those records. 
And then just so we can demo the navigation use case, there's a second page. <laughs> um, now, we're going to put command bar into this app, but if you hit command K, okay. voila, we already have command bar in this app. So this is what we're driving towards. Um, so Got it. So two I things can you can go do to lead. Here. That's where so I you am. And obviously use those navigation commands, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can also oh. search through those companies. Nice, nice. And then there's a new command once you get to, once you open up a company that lets you actually edit a property of the company. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. So then we can do stuff like say, oh no, the Krusty Krab is not, or Monsters Inc. They, they don't want to work with us anymore. Um, that is really, okay. That's actually really handy. That's cool. That's really cool. And those are really the three big buckets of use cases that, um, that we see people put into command bar. So there's the basic navigation, we'll walk through that. Search, we'll walk through that. Those context aware actions, we'll walk through that. What this demo is, does not capture is the use case you were talking about, which is that long tail of pages and actions that may, might not find their way into your UI because it's hard to demo an app with a long tail of actions. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And that's okay, because we're we're looking to get started, not to solve every problem. And and uh, I imagine you're going to have a list of resources for us at the end if we want to go deeper. Um, so let's get started by maybe showing me how to delete all of this, and then we'll add in this thing from scratch. Yeah, for sure. So uh, there's not a lot of code in here for anyone who's following along. Very basic uh, React app. We use Tailwind to make this look good, as so many people do. All the code to set up command bar is in that use command bar .ts file. Okay. So if I just delete this, so if you clock, I guess that, I won't even, let me not delete it. Let me just uh, empty it here. Uh, what do we, we only export this. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to. Yeah. Keep the hook. I'll just leave all this up here because we're going to end up needing to write it again. So that way we can we can talk through what each of and these then I'm going to have are. you do one one more thing, which is that um, well, let's talk about the first step. So once you head back to uh, app.commandbar.com, app.commandbar.com, yeah, perfect. So here you are, and go to the docs, which is a button in the bottom left, or you guessed it, uh, you can always use command bar inside commandbar.com. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Installation. Cool. So All right. basically three steps to installing command bar. Um, it, uh, the first thing you'll do is grab our uh, package, um, which you've already done. Jason. We've um, already got that. The next so thing you need to do is call that package. We've got command bar here. So then I need this piece. Yes, now, exactly. Is is this, uh, this is like my instance name? Exactly. So that's a, that's a code that corresponds to your organization. That's going to make sure you grab the right config. Okay. So we've got one of those out of the way. Now I have my init and then we boot it. Yep. So the difference between init and boot is when you, you're on an add command bar, you don't add the whole library. Okay. Init pulls down the latest version of the library. And then boot is what actually says, I want to make command bar available to my users. So once you init, you're not going to see anything. Once you boot, you will see something. Okay. If it works. So, it works. so in here, I do something like uh, window dot command bar. Now this, is this going to work? It's create react app, right? So it should. Is the, the user ID, do I need one of those right now or? You do. This is just how you identify the user. You can just do 42, 42, 42, or whatever you want. Okay. Drop that in here. Right. Cool. And then just so people are sort of following how this hook is being used. If you go to app.js, 
the TSI. We We're calling man bar. basically at the top level. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So this is this is not actually a React hook. This is uh this is named like a React hook, but it's not actually functioning as one. Indeed. So Got it. Okay. All right. Cool. So then so then I don't need to return anything from this. I can just kind of run this straight up and we'll see what happens if I go to my local host. Um, actually, before we do this, let me do one of these and let's reboot this thing. Okay, no command bar. I'm going to hit command K and nothing happens. And if I go up here, nothing happens. So then I'm going to reboot this thing. And we've got our button back. That's good. I'm going to hit command K and it opens up a thing. And I'm going to type something and we don't have any, you know, things in here, right? So this is this is unconfigured. One day we'll um, get to a place where you can just do that and then we'll try to introspect your business logic and set up your commands for sure. you. But we're not there yet. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So So that was pretty painless to at least get it in. What's my next step if I want to actually show something? So let's set up some navigation commands. And at this point, um, we should introduce the sort of other player in this setup story, which is the command bar editor. So we're going to write some code, but we also have a GUI. And oh, you'll actually okay. do some of the command setup in that GUI. The GUI okay. is a little bit different than other GUIs you've probably seen. So go ahead and open the command bar back up. And for those following along in the docs, this is step three of setting up command bar. And then once you're here, type open editor, two words, and hit return. Oh, that's neat. Secret. See, this is what I was talking So this is the secret bar with the water balloons. You just gotta know the password to get in. <laughs> a Konami okay. code. <laughs> okay, right. so welcome to the editor. The editor is essentially a CMS for commands. The whole purpose of the editor is, well, one, to make it easier to get set up quickly, but two, so that anyone on the team can contribute to setting up commands or making changes to commands. You don't have to ship code to ship changes to command bar. Nice. Uh, and I just saw Twilio just raided us. So welcome Twilio and, and everybody who is watching uh, to catch you up on what's going on. We are working on integrating command bar. Uh, James Evans is here from command bar talking about that. And so far, all we've done is kind of talk about why it's exciting. You can watch the replay for that if you're interested. Um, and it, what we are doing right now is we've literally just started. We imported the command bar module package and we have used my command bar ID to get into my account here. And now I've written a, a use command bar, which gets called in the app like this. And we have the, the very basics and we're using the, the editor, which we open with open editor as the command in the command bar. So we're in our local app, but we're actually using command bar now, which is pretty, pretty slick. Um, okay. So. Anybody who knows to do this and who's part of the account, I assume, is uh, is going, well, yeah, because I had to log in, is going to be able to add commands. And to do that, I just I just navigate. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So as you'll see, some commands can be set up without any code. Some will require some code. Nav command, basic nav commands don't require code. What am I, I feel like there's going to be, what is this? What are you? I don't know what this icon is called, but I found it. Um, so behavior is same tab. And let's, we yeah, let's go... do same tab for now. We'll, we'll upgrade it in a second. And was it leads? I think it was leads. Yeah. Yeah. It's slash leads. Slash leads. Okay. Category navigation, synonym. So we could do we could do something like um, users and people and companies, right? It's return, not comedy limited. It's return delimited. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Okay, users, companies, people. All right. Um, and then for an explanation, 
view all leads. And then as a Mac OS shortcut, we could add these, but we don't necessarily need to. And as we'll learn later, we, uh, later. We, don't, we think users should be able to attach their own shortcuts to stuff. So if we have time, we'll, we'll make that happen. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, and then do I just... Yeah, hit that big orange toggle. Ayo. All right. So now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to close this. Apparently yeah, I'm not click the editor. It. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. Hey! Ayo. I thought we were going to have to write code. We didn't have to write any code. So we, <laughs> we now have basic nav. That's nice. Indeed. So let's do one more thing. So for anyone who's setting up command bar inside of a React app, uh, you'll probably want, you don't want, the, you don't want the browser reloading every time the user does navigation action. That's why we have nice things like React Router, right? That's um, why we have nice things. <laughs> gotcha. So uh, we're using the same tab functionality. That is going to trigger, often trigger a reload. Uh -huh. So to avoid that problem, we're going to hook command bar into whatever client-side router you're using. In our case, uh, we've got React Router um, hooked up. Okay. So go ahead and un uncomment. Go back. In, in this case, we're okay. we're going to do a lot of jumping between the editor and code, which is so you, the way you've set up your windows is perfect. Okay. So go ahead and uncomment the React Router. Um, and then what we're going to do is let's actually um, set up a uh, use effect within here. You want to, yeah. For that, you'll want to. Looks like uncomment line one. Okay, so we'll do a React use effect. And is this like on initial load? Uh, uh for now, yeah. Okay. Cool. And then let's use that uh, navigate, use navigate hook to grab a uh, navigate object. Actually, sorry, you'll want to do that outside of the hook. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> and then back inside the use effect, um, we're going to create a router function. And the router function is just a function that takes a uh, string URL and uses uh, your client-side router to client-side route. Like so? so in this case, uh, you'll just want router to use navigate. Yeah, that's it. There you go. So command bar is going to use this function to do client-side routing. This is one of those do once, use many setup steps. So this is like the first thing we have everyone do so that they can use the router for all of their navigation commands. So now you just need to make it available to command bar. Okay. And the way you do that is window.commandbar.addRouter. And I pass in my router. Correct. And then the only other thing you want to do is make the use effect depend on uh, navigate. All right. Then here, I assume I just check this use router box. Yep, that's right. And it's saying, ah, you don't have a router to find, but we just did it. So if you refresh, okay. it'll go away. So let's close it up and I'll say go to leads and it does it. And then I'm going to navigate somewhere else. Let's go to integrations and we'll go to leads and no reload. Great. So that did exactly what we wanted it to do. Indeed, this is the setup for all basic navigation commands. So we could go in and create navigation commands to our heart's content using the router and it all it all function this way. So mm -hmm. that's really the first use case uh, that we wanted to cover today is just setting up those those basic navigation actions. Right. And so we can we can go back here and just to do another one really fast, we've got the integrations. Right. And then we'll we'll do like a Plug, there we go. And that's going to be a link, use router, and that goes to integrations. We won't set up any anything for that. So it's live. 
And now we can go integrations and we go leads and we are now fully using our app, right? That's, that's pretty slick. Ooh, this we is interesting. Look, it's fuzzy. Like it, it let me typo and it still works, which is really nice. Yeah, I'd say that's step and, one in our step one in our journey of making it so that you don't have to use the specific syntax of an app going from right. <laughs> going from uh, command line to proper, you know, proper NLP ified search bar. That's and that's really nice because uh, and also with my synonyms, I can do like people. Oh, not quite. What if I yeah, I typo people and it works. And I can what was it? It was like users. So this is really nice with some, some, you know, lightweight. And also if we look at our dead ends, we'll see, oh, people are always typing this when they mean this. Let's go add it to synonyms. We can start catching people and, and all that good stuff too. That is exactly right. And that was actually one of the reasons we built that editor in the first place was to enable that loop because as you're using the, your own app, you will come up with these synonyms. Like you will command K, you will forget your own mm. vocabulary and command K and use a different word and you'll find it's frustrating when that doesn't take you where you want to go. And right. So we just want you to be able to pop open the editor, add that synonym and move on. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. So, I mean, this is, this is great. This is doing exactly what I want it to do. And I have spent under 20 minutes, including a lot of jibber jabber, uh, getting this set up and running. Right. And this isn't an existing app. So I think there, there are a couple things that we could say here, like, you know, oh, this app was, was a demo that was built for this. But at the same time, we didn't use any of the code in this app. We've completely contained the, the bar in this one initialization file. Um, and the only, the only integration we have so far with the app outside of it just sitting on top is this, like, let me use the router so that we get uh, single page app style navigation. Um, and so this would work with React. We could put in a view router. We could use it with Next or Remix or Gatsby or whatever. And it's all going to work because we just have to tell it how to navigate with the programmatic API, which I think every front end framework at this point probably has a programmatic navigation API of some sort. Um, or you could even use like window location or or you could you could write your own very complicated thing of like load the next page, grab the contents of body, swap it out. You know you can do all these. Yeah, these people really sometimes do pretty things. funky things with their router. Uh, and in general, that's how we try to d d design the SDK is to make it so like where where possible, you can provide a generic function and do whatever you want. I love that. Okay, so I get navigation. That that all makes sense to me. Um, what should I add in next? Level two. Okay, for level two, let's make those leads searchable. So you've got that table of leads, Krusty Krab, GameStop, Stark, Industries, what have you. Let's make it so you can quickly jump to any of those leads. This is kind of like the Slack use case. Slack is, pro people always reference Slack as one of the most used command K interfaces. This is essentially a quick switch like Slack has. Yes, and that is that is also, I would say, probably my most used um, so yeah, I want that. Okay, let's do it. So preamble, um, there's two ways to make stuff searchable in command bar. One is to take stuff that's loaded on the client side and provide that entire list to command bar. That's what we're going to do in this example. Obviously, <laughs> There are plenty of lists out there in the world that are not client-side loadable. Right. And if you're following along in the docs, there's a separate section for how to connect command bar to a server-side search endpoint. So you can take the user's query, pass it to whatever endpoint you want to use, whether that's you know a homegrown or a commercial system, and provide back results. We're going to do the client-side example today because it's really fast for the user. <laughs> it's a really magical Got it. And so you, so you could theoretically hook this up with uh, your own like Algolia instance or Elasticsearch or something like that, right? Totally. Um, yeah, I, I don't actually remember how, what the, uh, how the Netlify command bar is configured, but in, whenever you use a command bar, like for example, if you go to ClickUp or Shortcut and you see a loading spinner on the right-hand side as you are searching, that spinner is reflecting the fact that Gotcha. We're going, taking your query and hitting a backend. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Well, that's good. That means that, uh, th so this is not like a, 
full replacement for everything that you would put into your app. This is a, this is a convenience layer on top of all the services you're already using. That's gotcha. a perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, that makes it, that makes it really nice. Okay, perfect. Okay. So level two, we're going to, we're going to do some search and we're going to do that client side. So how does one do such a thing? Okay. So for orientation, just head over to the store folder just so we can see what we've got in state. Uh, yeah, and then... Uh, Make it cool. Sorry, store.ts. Store.ts, gotcha. Cool. So this is our, uh, this is our state, um, and we're going to uh, load companies into, into command bar. And where are we going to put companies? We have this abstraction in command bar called context. Okay. Context is basically command bars global store. So if you want to put, if you want to make any data available to command bar, either to make it searchable or to use it in some other way and to configure a command, you add it to context. Gotcha. Okay. So we're so going to add to context. Exactly. Context. Exactly. The window dot command bar dot context, add context. All right. And then inside here, we have a key, an initial value, a con, uh, an initial value is a context loader. I'm assuming that's a function. And then it can be have... a function or a, or a value. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, leads is my key. Yep. And then it could be a literal value, which could be all of my leads. Which we then need yeah, to Yeah, so if you wanted to just put a literal, you know, array here, ABC, to just to illustrate the point, um, that would work. But we want to go grab, we've got our leads defined somewhere else. So we got to go grab them. Um, and you can use uh, the Vaultio infrastructure to do that. And I think we've got this imports at the top already. Yeah, so this, this the first two that are not, that are commented out. Okay. All right. Perfect. And so instead of this, we're going to, and I don't know Vaultio, so you're going to have to guide me here. No worries. Uh, so uh, at the top of the function, let's grab snapshot from the use snapshot hook and pass it the underscore. Okay. And is that, it's like a top level like this? Yep. And just put the underscore um, well, from store like... into the first positional argument. Does it need something? Why is it yelling at me? Yeah, the underscore. You oh, I have to pass that in. Yeah, uh, underscore. Okay, perfect. Got it, got it, got so it. this is giving us access to uh, our global store essentially. Now um, we want we could just pass in snapshot dot companies there because um, that's a literal and that'll work. So why don't we just go ahead and do that? Okay. Cool. So you just added your first set of uh, data to context. Before we, before we uh, depart from the code though, we do want to subscribe to changes in mm -hmm. the context array to keep command bar context in sync with your state management. So gotcha. to do that, you guessed it, just wrap it in a use effect. I guess, eh, let's not do it that way. Let's do it a better way and, and have a second use effect so that they, they don't all re-trigger at the same time. And we will snapshot and then move this one in. Like that? Uh, yes, sir. I think you want to actually probably just for cleanliness uh, make it dependent on snapshot.companies. That's snapshot a faulty thing. Okay. Done and done. Cool. So we've loaded data into command bar. Now let's, you're not going to see any commands or any, anything yet. show up in the command bar yet. Um, because we have to tell command bar what to do when one of those pieces of data is selected. But if you okay. go into the context tab, left-hand side, it's not really a tab. Oh, here we go. Context. Uh, and then hit inspector at the top. That's your context. Hey, look at these. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. 
Cool. So now we just need to tell command bar what to do uh, when one of these is selected, and that's going to make it searchable. Uh, okay. The way you're going to do that is you're actually going to create a command. So commands take action in command bar. So whenever we select a piece of content, we need to have an associated command that's going to do something. So we can actually start from the context page. And then see leads down there? Mm -hmm. so this is a bit of command bar terminology. An attribute is something in context that's not searchable. And a record is something in context that is searchable. So we put something now, in the context. Why, why would I use one or the other? I mean, I get why I would want something to be searchable. Why would I put it in? Yeah, so why would you not want something to be searchable? searchable? We'll actually see an example of this. Okay. But one really common one is you can control uh, what which users see what commands. And so, for example, you might want to pass in here. Well, a lot of people just pass in their entire user object. But you might, for example, put an is admin flag. That's or a like, yeah, like our back, like what roles? Exactly. Roles is a really common one. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. And so then, then I could use this. So you, you mentioned that this is like, a, um, this can also be a function. So theoretically I could get the current user's roles and only show them companies that their role is allowed to see as part of that. And that would be using that attribute. Is that correct? Or am I am I doing something else? Yeah, you could definitely do it that way. And even in even in the editor, you can like maybe we can just show it. So if you go to commands again, and then let's say you're like, well, I only want to make the leads command available to people who have access to the leads command or the leads page. So you'd go into the command, you'd hit on you'd go to that availability tab at the top there. And then you can create conditions that describe when this command is able to be used. Those can reference data in context. Gotcha. Okay, let me delete. It's always available back to leads, discard changes. And we're going to go back to context. And now you said a record is something searchable and we want this to be searchable. So I'm going to click this button. That's correct. Quick find just means I want it to be searchable uh, without selecting a command first. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Label field key. It's actually label. This is referring to the property of the object. That's the primary key. Oh, okay. 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 So what that lines up to is in this context, we have a label yep. and I'm saying use the label field from the, the leads, uh, the leads context object. Got it. Okay. I understand. Oh, and now it has a create command. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm going to create, create a command. command. Or jump to company. <clears throat> Perfect. And we'll, I don't know, that looks like, a, that's a company icon, right? Um, and we're going to link, and that'll use the router, and that's going to be home. No, what will it be? Let's try. Let's go to one of these, and that's going to be, leads, but then we need leads. Oops, that's not it. Go, go back to the, so we're going to create a dynamic, a dynamic uh, link. So you, as you saw, the it's slash lead slash ID, right? So right. you can't hard code the ID. So what are we going to do? Um, <laughs> we're going to go. Early, yeah, exactly. You guessed it. This is another pattern that I'm very supportive of becoming really common across the internet. <laughs> Double curly braces. <laughs> Oh, okay. So maybe I missed a piece though. Is, uh, is it this lead? Is that the... This lead, correct. So this lead refers to the selected lead. And then you can just dot into that to grab the ID property. Okay, but I am missing my dot, which makes me wonder if I did something wrong. No, you're good. You can just, you can just do this lead. Dot ID. Dot ID. Okay. Um, we're going to use router. I lost my icon when I started bouncing around trying to find stuff. Uh, and then you just need to add a, a category. So just maybe add it to the search category. Or <laughs> we, we should probably rename a category. Just add it to the settings one for now. Okay, we'll rename settings. Um, and we'll leave all the rest of it together. Turn it on. All right, so now let me go back to these. And we'll just... Rename this one to, uh, what, what would you call this one? Search? Search, yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to 
jump out and we will say jump to user. I'm going to jump to Krusty Crab. Okay, that was easier than I expected. Um, I mean, that's great. Like, this is this is wonderful that it just does. Uh... Ah, that's awesome. That's super helpful. All right. So a couple, we... a couple goodies. So just to, one thing to note that we got sort of for free, uh, which you may not get for free if you're following along, is if you command K and search for Krusty Krab, you'll see that the icon shows up. That's just because we have as a property called icon um, that contains either an SVG string or a URL to an icon. So if you want that to show up, you just have to have an icon property in your records. Got it. Got it. And so just to show what that looks like, I'm going to go to companies and you're speaking specifically of this. Yep. So it looks like it's a URL. You can also pass a, an SVG string here. So if you want to do some funky icon creation on the fly, you can do that too. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Very cool. Very, very cool. And then one other goodie. So right now we're, we talked about the, the label key earlier. That's, you know, what shows up in the title of the record, the primary key. Um, there's some other data here as well. So for example, like the contact name, um, let's go ahead and make contact name searchable as well. So if I search for Eugene, it's going to show Krusty Krab and you're going to do that actually from the editor. So head back to the context tab. This one? Yep. And then scroll down to searchable fields. Oh, that's that cool. Return. And then save. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Okay. I see you, command bar. Uh, this is great. I this mean, is, I love this is that. another editor loop, right? It's just nice. It's just nice to not have to do extra stuff to make that work. Like, and and what I like about this is it feels very approachable because I like we have this data in here, and there's some stuff that is, uh, you know, you have to configure your data a certain way, like having an icon field. But I have a suspicion that if I wanted to change the name of the field, I could. Is that right? Like, can I say <laughs> instead of icon? That's like the know, one field you can't change. <laughs> Okay, so we do need to create an icon field if we want that yeah. to work. Um, but if I want to search any number of fields, this is, I assume this is not limited, except by probably the common sense, but um, you, you can put any of the fields in your, your entries here to be searchable so that somebody could basically type whatever and it would work. So how would this work for say, um, like speaking of a CRM, let's assume you use a tool like Gong that is going to transcribe your sales calls and you remember somebody was talking about something and you need to go follow up with that lead. So you just start typing the phrase that, you know, they said, uh, you know, Oh, we need X. And you're like, uh, type in X. Does it do full text search like that? Or is that when you would start reaching for an Algolia or something like that? No, oh, it totally, it totally could. Um, it's kind of, uh, people are surprised at how, how fast client side search can be. Um, and so the recommendation is always, if you can always start with client side search, throw as many fields as you want into the searchable field section and, and see how fast it is for your, for your biggest users, for your users with the most data. So try it and see, don't worry about one thing we do. One technical note. Sorry, say that again. Uh, I, I think we've got a little bit of a delay. I was saying uh, that we don't worry about premature optimization. Just try it and see. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's usually like we find that it starts to get slow if you add a ton of fields and like around fifteen thousand records on the client side. Obviously, if you have like gargantuan records, that number sure, is slower. Sure, sure. Um, but that's that's a number that most people are surprised that it's like above a thousand. Um, yeah, that's that's one technical um, thing. On sure. the if you do include like a really long searchable field, we will turn down the fuzziness for that because if you have a really long searchable fields and fuzzy match, you're just going to match everything. Yeah. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So, so we did now search. we've got, we've got navigation. We've got search. We have been doing this for about 30 minutes and we already got further than I think I expected us to get. So why not make it harder? I want to 
we've got this edit button. Can I, can we add that editing feature where I can, I, we can change the stage? Let's change the stage. All right. So, I'm ready. Um, this is uh, going to showcase a different type of command. So to date, we've been talking about links. Both of the right. commands that we've created are link commands. They're different flavors. The first one just takes you to a page, static link. Second one takes you to a dynamic the search, takes you to a dynamic link according to what, what you selected. We're going to use a totally different command type for this action, um, a callback command. Okay. So like I said, we try to be as generic as possible. Uh, it's really useful to be able to use arbitrary JavaScript when you want to make something happen inside your app. And that's what a callback command is. So it's a command that's going to run some JavaScript provided by you on the client side when the command is executed. Okay. So now I, I'm um, assuming since it's gonna be arbitrary JavaScript, we probably write that first before we wire it up. Correct. Um, okay. And this is often what's what we're doing here is is very similar to what happens when someone sets up command bar inside, you know, a real app is they'll get in there, they'll set up some navigation commands, they'll attach their data, and then they'll say, what's the business logic that I want to provide? This is kind of like the Neuralink example. This is we're placing the probe on the brain of uh, of this app right now. We're, we're making gotcha. the business logic available. Cool. So we are going to learn a uh, new uh, SDK method called add callback. That key. So um, with this can be arbitrary, I assume. So I can say like update lead. Status. Was yep. that what it was? And why don't you go ahead and call it? Yeah, status. Perfect. Because that's that's the field we're gonna we're gonna act on. And the callback function itself is gonna be one of these. Uh, I'm gonna hide that so we can see what's going on. Cool. So now we just need to you know peek into the logic of the app and figure out how how the hell we're gonna update um, update the stage of a company. And so okay. um, the function that we're going to use is called edit company details and that's the function that exists uh, it's actually the import is at the, already at the top of that file oh got it so that's in store actions oh that makes sense we're taking action and we're going to edit company details which is this one here and let's just take a look at what it does so this takes a company id takes the field of uh field of company it's just saying running. which which field do you want to it's a generic edit function so this is just saying which field do you want to edit gotcha 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 so we can edit any field technically but we're going to uh, edit specifically the status and then we take the the voltio store into the companies we find the one that matches by id and then we grab the assuming the company exists we get the field and then we update it to be our new value and adds a notification Okay, that all makes sense. I can follow that. So let's uh, let's get this one in here, and then we're going to. I assume do I can I just drop like edit company details directly in here, or I probably have to translate a little bit, right? Pretty pretty much. Um, you can just drop edit company details in there. Now the first argument is what company. So we'll come back to this for now. I think just put one two three. Okay, so we need company ID. We need the which we field. don't have, which we don't have yet. Right, and the field is going to be status, which is um, it's actually called it's called stage ID. Yeah, there you go. Stage ID. All right, so we're going to update the stage ID, and the third thing was the value, and the new stage <clears> ID <throat> is going to be like we'll just go new stage ID, and. Perfect. So we've got right. two, two slots that we need to figure out how to fill. Um, the first of those slots is company ID. So this is what, what company are we acting on? And for this, we're going to use context again. So we've got the active lead as a property in our global store, our Valtio global store. And so we just need to wire that piece of information or we just need to provide that information to context just like we provided leads. So we wire it into this context? 
I would just go ahead and copy that entire use effect and make a new one that, um, and then for there, yeah, exactly. And is it like snapshot dot active lead? Yep. Okay. And that's all happening up in, in here. Or it's actually called um, active, active company. Active company. Yeah, oh, there it is. Mixing our terminology a little bit. Uh, has a missing dependency. And that needs to be active company. Here we go. All right. So this one okay, then cool. is, is going to be what just snapshot dot active company. <clears throat> that's a good, that's a, this is a good, a good uh, teaching point, which is that you've now got two places you could draw from. You could draw from your Voltio store, or you could draw from the command bar global store, which is context. Mm. Those two things are going to be in sync because you wrote that use effect uh, correctly. So we always recommend using command bar context and the way you can guarantee you get the most up to, to avoid race conditions basically and get the most up-to-date context as of when the user executed the command is uh, to use context and we actually pass context in as an argument to the callbacks is it uh, like destructured or just the first argument uh, you can destructure it. it's actually this, the second argument so the first argument is uh, a, a, a the arguments that are provided to command bar, that's what we're going to use for stage ID. The second argument is just the full context object. Got it. Like that. Which we pass by reference. So if anyone's wondering how that's fast. Okay. So then I'm going to go context dot active lead ID. I think that is correct. It doesn't like context dot active but... lead dot ID. That's correct. And you're just going to want to type context. Okay. And that. What's the what's the right context? We we have we have types. They're not here. So for the sake of this, we can commit the mortal sin of just any any defying it. All my all my TypeScript chat is losing. Sorry, Jason's gonna hop off the stream and immediately wash his hands. I I mean, me I am I am uh, I'm like the worst TypeScripter on the planet. I'm like I don't know, just just change the the extension to .js, right? <laughs> yeah, we've got unhappy chat. Uh, we're, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're half a step away from doing that. Okay, cool. So then we've got <laughs> so we've got the active lead, um, and this is going to obviously update when we go to a different lead. <clears throat> now we just need to figure out the new stage ID. Mm -hmm. So this, if you remember, we don't have it now, but if you remember how this command worked, when we were on a lead, we open up the command, and then we can actually select the stage. Right, right, right. right. So we're providing it as input. Um, we call that an argument. So the yeah. navigation commands that we've created so far are argumentless. Right. Actually, if you go into, um, if you just go back to command bar for a second in the in the app. One of these, this one. Here we go. Or uh, sorry, go to go to your your uh, your command bar and that we've been building. Close out of the editor, and then um, instead of searching directly for a company, oh, just open up the command bar. And then see um, jump to user. See that little arrow on the right side of jump to user? That means this command has an argument and it's going to take some user input. So if you select jump to user, it's then going to show you the list of uh, records. Now, we made it. We turned on quick find. So that made it so you didn't have to first select the command to search for something. But we're basically just going to recreate this structure for change stage. But stage is not going to be searchable before the action is selected. Gotcha. Okay, great. So to do that, I need to, let's see, we have our active lead. Um, and then my argument that comes out here, is that going to be like a, is it like a whatever I want to call it so I can choose like args.stage ID? Exactly. You're going to be able to set this key in the editor. Okay. So we'll, we'll set this part up. So this theoretically will work, right? Because we're not going to call this until we have the pieces that we need. We've added exactly. the, the lead ID, but now we need to figure out how to define the command in the command bar. Because if I go back here and I reload and I open it up, there's like, I don't have an option to update my lead. And if I, if I type in Krusty Krab or whatever, um, I still don't have any options here. So 
how, yeah, I guess for step one is like, how do I call this? Or we need to create this new command that, that is going to use this callback. And then step two will be figuring out how to define the arguments. Exactly. Um, before we do that, let's just, let's just wrap the add callback call and use effect. I, sorry, I forgot that step. Wrap it in a use effect. Got it. Yeah. And just an on mount dating myself. Okay. So we'll take this and move this down here. Right. Uh, and this is going to depend on, does it depend on anything? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, okay. That's fine. So we'll do that once, once it mounts. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now let's, let's create the command. So uh, let's go ahead and add it. We don't really have a category for it. Maybe we can rename help to actions. Okay. Cool. Let's create a command. And add a new command. We're going to put it in actions. Here we go. And this is going to be update stage. Um, and we'll just give it like a, sure. And oh, <laughs> callback. That makes sense. Callback key. I don't need to copy paste. It was already populated for me. That's wonderful. Um, what's that? This is just going to show you how to do that. What? It's weirdly, it's weirdly narrow. It's just going to show you how to do it if you hadn't done it already. Nice. Okay. So add an argument. Argument name is going to be this one. Nailed it. All right. And then an argument type, list of options. And we can pull in context records. Oh, okay, all right. Things are starting to click here. So do we have, let me check, stages. <laughs> okay, Got so it. now I can pull in my stages the same way that I pulled in my um, my other stuff here, my snapshot. So Precisely. Do, wait, do I already have it then? Uh, no, I, I need to add the added context. stages yet. So we're just going to add so, it exactly the same way you add companies. So I'm going to add stages and we're going to go snapshot.stages. And then I'm going to. You can just type stages that. there. Oh, wait. What did I just do? I can navigate it to a weird place. So I'm going to. Is that, is that going to break? I cancel you're just going to have to refresh and... after you create it. You can just start. Right, it, 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 just save and, and then come back to it. Yeah. Okay. Saving. Refresh and then... All right. Coming back in. Update my stage. Add an argument. Now I'm going to put uh, this stage ID goes in here. Hit that button. It's a list of options. That's going to be stages. There we go. It's auto-populated because I added it in first. They can select a single one. Pre-select current context key for the current value, um, that's going to be the existing stage ID, I would assume. So like... I, I, we should skip this for now for, for okay. Uh, speed. Okay. So just save it? I think so. All right, let's roll. I'm going to turn it on. I actually know there's going to be a problem, <laughs> but we can we can run through it. Okay, so a thing is broken because this doesn't seem to be tied to a company. Correct. So, uh, oh well, it is, it is actually we're we're on we're on the crusty crab. It is okay. So it's it's going to work for. So if I what's that? We're in contract negotiation. Let me change it. I'm going to update it to contacted, and it says uh, <clears throat> broke it. We're just, it's just the difference between passing the full stage object into the function versus the actual uh, ID of the stage. So the only thing you have to do <clears throat> is in your callback, instead of args.stage ID, args, <clears throat> excuse me, args.stage ID dot ID. Aha. Okay. So let's go update. We're going to say qualified. And now it works. Okay. So perfect. All right. That's working. Um, I did notice that it is, a, that's a little disconcerting. I thought it was unhooked. 
because I didn't see the like crusty crab part. So can I associate this action? Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's maybe change the name of the command to include the active company. So to do oh, that- Oh, is that all we have to do? Okay. You could do like, <clears throat> and we see parens often as a pattern to describe the, yeah, there's no autocomplete there yet, sadly, but it's okay. coming. But you can still use, you can still use the, you still need to use the, the double curly braces. It's just not going to help you out. Okay. All right. So this is going to be, um, remind me it's, is it context dot? Context dot active lead dot label. Okay. Wow. All right. And then uh, what else do we need to do here? We're, we're just about at time. So are there any last touches before we move on to like next steps for people who want to keep going? The, the, the command is done. I think a really satisfying conclusion is to attach a keyboard shortcut to it. So you can imagine you, your, your poor Jim Halper and you're trying to update 30,000 leads uh, and you need to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for me to do that, we're going to say, what? yeah, I'm just going to save it as L. So if I'm in here and I type L, oh my goodness. And then we go to the next one, Wayne Enterprises. I type L. Oh, it's beautiful. This is great. <laughs> I love this. Like, this is such a nice, these are the sorts of things that I want to build. Right. And I never do it because they start as a simple idea and they immediately blow balloon up into a million little edge cases and feature requests and things like that. And that's sort of what I love about this era of dev tooling is that that simple idea that I had that gets too complex for me to build is now because we're building modern building blocks, you know, based on this and a web design article that you shared, right? We're, we're building common interfaces. I don't have to build that. There's a company that had that idea and is putting all of that effort because these patterns like, oh, command bar, I could whip one of those up in a day. We all think that, right? And then it's like, <laughs> oh man, that is, there's so many little things I'd love to add and, you've, and it spins off into a whole company. Um, and so I think that's such a this is definitely one of those cases where, you know, I, I started out convinced that a command palette was a good idea. And throughout the course of this episode, I've, ju I've just kind of noticed like little touches that I would have eventually wanted that I didn't know I needed until I just, I just, you know, tried it. The, the L to update the lead status. Come on. Like that's, <laughs> that's so, it's so nice to be able to do those sorts of things and just have them run. Um, exactly. And I, I often say this, like in our company, like this is literally all we do is we are doing nothing, but doing this interface. I love when people build their own command palettes. We always get ideas from people who are building from scratch. We think this is a, the, an interface, a pattern that deserves like the full attention of a company because there is so much to get right. Like, for example, one last thing before, before I let you hop off, uh, I want, we should update the, uh, the styling just to show folks that it doesn't have to look like this. So if you go, if you go into the editor again and click on settings and then styles, and then you can maybe switch to the other theme. Did I, did that work? I'm honestly forgetting what it looked like before. Um, let me switch the theme. Here's modern. Oh, it's modern. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is one we 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 created for you, just for oh, you. Oh, nice. This is the Jason theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is nice and clean. Um. So I mean, this is wonderful, right? Like that's in and that's a and these are all customizable, I assume. Totally. Yeah. So this is. I mean, this is great. So uh, we are unfortunately out of time. So I am going to. I just dropped your Twitter into the chat. Everybody, go follow James for more ish, for more information. Um, I am also going to drop the commandbar.com. Are there any other resources you want to shout out as we are wrapping up this episode for folks who want to learn more? Commandbar.com doc docs or slash docs. That's that's where we've been following along today. And if you're thinking you might want to put a command palette into your app and you're not sure, you know what use cases are most interesting or whether your users will use it. This is literally all we do. So we'd love to, you know, walk you through it and help you come up with some cool use cases. 
Awesome. All right. This episode, like every episode, has been live captioned. We've had Amanda here all day from White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much. And that's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. So thank you very much for that. While you're checking out things on the site, make sure you go and take a look at the schedule. We have all sorts of good stuff coming in. I don't have enough time to talk about it today, but I'm very, very excited. Make sure you go and check this out. Uh, we'll be adding more all the time. Make sure you click that add on Google Calendar button. Give us a follow on Twitch. Or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Uh, James, thank you so much for taking the time today. It has been an absolute pleasure learning how Command Bar works. Uh, I'm really excited to see what people build with it. Chat, go out and, and build some stuff. Tweet at both of us. Let us see what you build because turns out I'm really into Command Bars. Um, with that, I think we call this one a success. James, Thank you so, so much again for hanging out. Chat, stay tuned. We're going to go find somebody to raid. We will see you all next time. Thanks for having me.